Hi. Hi, Katie and Deborah and Julie and Jen. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm so excited. Okay. Should be coming on here. I'm looking for my comments. <laughs> okay. Yes, see? Thank you, Sonia. I grabbed my goggles. So, we should be ready to go now. Okay. <laughs> Putting goggles on. Commencing PPE. <laughs> Hi, Krista. All right, guys. So, hello. Happy Sunday. Let me fix this view. So these are the rocks um, that Katie and I, we did the fabric de decoupage on them the other day for a Friday night live on Facebook for mixed media. I don't know how mixed media I'm going, but I wanted to use my rocks with fabric on them. So um, I didn't do anything to it. it. They are exactly prepped the way I left them and we I had used um liquitex professional line this is the matte gel and this is a, a sample size that comes in a box of others and you you get um the matte the the gloss and uh i can't remember the other one there's two or three of them there's a heavy body and a and a something else anyways um this does come in a larger size which is how i would purchase it um if i were buying it outright anyways this is what i used um on these to get the fabric to stick down nicely the this is from a shirt of mine that i cut up so it's not something i can tell you where to go to get it um this is part of a fat quarter i picked up at walmart in their fabric section and they come it comes like this in these folded um, portions for a dollar forty nine so this is part of that fat fat portion <laughs> hi Erin thank you so this is a bee that I have done uh, several times and I'm sure um, you guys have seen it if you've gone through the guides or my old um, tutorials or my early YouTube tutorials and I just used a piece of carbon paper and traced it onto my rock like I do normal and it went right on there very nicely see traced right on there no smearing no nothing and this is Posca pen and that worked nice I was worried that it might bleed and it did not so I have to say I'm pretty happy with this Liquitex now, mind you, these have had, this one has been on here since Tuesday. Um, I don't remember if I put this one on there Tuesday or not. <laughs> but anyways, they've had quite some time to dry. So that may be my finger. <laughs> That's the same. Okay, guys, you guys want to know what's wrong with my finger? This is a allergy that I have to UV products. And I I originally injured it almost a year ago. I got a blister from getting the UV glue on me. It was a Mac Art Nail Art Foil Glue and all of them do it to me. Anyways, it still peels, cracks, and bleeds almost a year later. So if you have the allergy, you put your gloves on. I would like to see you put your gloves on anyways, but... Anyways, I have to cover it up because the skin there, you can see a little bit, is so thin that it just... You know, it's a mess. So anyways, that's what that's about. I had to put a big one on there because I'm out of my other ones. <laughs> no other reason. Sorry, it's nice and bright and yellow. But I'll be putting gloves over it so you won't be able to see that. Hi, Allison. Sorry, guys, I have my gloves all the way across the room. <laughs> that's not good. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on with my Posca and finish working out the black areas uh, that I want to do. Actually, first, I'm going to mix up a small portion 
just a tiny drip of black. Oh, okay, that's too much, but <laughs> I'll show you what I'm doing here. Pardon me. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so I'm just mixing up a very, very tiny bit of this black just to make sort of a tint, I guess that would be what it's called. Maybe. <laughs> Can you see that? Just like a wash of color. <laughs> Allison's blinging out eggs. Now that's good. So I need to make more. So I'm just going to add some water. A few drips of water. A little bit of black matte paint. And I've never done this on decoupage or on top of acrylic. I've done it on rocks before. So I'm hoping it works the same or similar way. What I'm doing is wanting to tint my bee wing be wings <laughs> so okay fingers crossed here we go may or may not work anyways I'm going to do this and let it dry while I'm finishing the other blacks not too bad I just want it tinted you know like um a bee wing, you know how they're sort of a transparent grayish color. Nice. But since it is on top of fabric, it's going to need a little bit to dry. Of course, the one piece of black paint I have on my finger, I had to touch my rock. <laughs> I'm going to be foiling this, so um, I might have to get the blow dryer out. How is everyone? Hi, Lori. <laughs> Hi, Lonnie. Hi, Delia. There is quite a glare on there, but it's just about what I'm looking for. Okay. And I'm gonna use a Thule Art, if I can find it here, in black. This is the uh, medium, I believe for the big part of the body. I used Posca 1MR on these parts. Actually, I'm gonna do <clears throat> down here. So what I'm gonna do is black out the areas that I'm obviously going to keep painted black and then in between those in here is going to be metallic gold Wanda Gold. <laughs> yep, it's Wanda Gold. Aww. So this is one of the gold foils that I sell, and it has these beautiful flowers on it. So I'm going to, it's called Sakura, um, is the name of it when I purchased it from the distributor. Sakura or Sakura, but I love that. So gorgeous. So that's going to be our bee bits, <laughs> or the gold bits of the bee. And then this is another foil that I sell. 
And this is the clear, I call it laser, but can you see the little holographicness to it? This is going to go over the black to give our bee a velvet look. And on the wings, I haven't made up my mind yet <laughs> if I want lace or if I want to go with what I always go with <laughs> because I love this set so much. Oh my gosh. And it has funny comb. So I'll let you go. Oh, I might not have enough. <laughs> oh yeah, I do. So I'll let you guys tell me if you like this with flowers on it with the honeycomb for the bee wings or the black lace. You know how I am. It's an interactive thing here. We work together. So you guys can tell me what you want. Double foiling. Yep, we can do that too. You can uh, definitely double foil, which is you can lay down a metallic and you can put a lace on top of it. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to do that on this one. You can, um, I haven't tried it with fabric, but, um, I heard an alternative to Liquitex matte. There is a Mod Podge. The issue is that it is semi-gloss. It doesn't say semi-gloss, but it ends up being semi-gloss, if that makes sense. It dries with a, glo a glossy sheen. And for me... That's kind of hard to work on. So matte is better for me. Um, let's see. Julie's saying, what about holographic foil with black lace over it? I think that might cover up my the sheerness of my bee wing though maybe I think it might not be even dark enough there oh good to know thanks thanks for the tip on the tuli I don't have uh, big Poscas though, I just have this one size, the 1MR, in black and white. And then I have some other brand, you know, maybe I'll use the, I have somewhere, <laughs> black, um, yeah, I think that's the black, space black, Arteza, we'll try that one. We'll figure it out, right? So all of this has to be black too, because I said. <laughs> and I'm the boss of this one tonight, right? <laughs> Just kidding. You guys can be the boss. This is nice. This is Space Black by Arteza. I'm thinking it's probably not matte though. It's ink. How about that? Water-based ink. It looks pretty dark, which is nice. I like that. Oh, wow, Julie, I've never had that happen with Posca. 
I've heard that before too, that, um, you know, some paint pens can spurt out stuff. And I never burnt mine out. I always forget to do that. And I've just never had it do that. This is working pretty good. The Arteza acrylic. I say Arteza. It's probably Arteza. What? How's what coming out like what? Julie, what? <laughs> How's what coming out like what? Yeah, this is fabric. So there's, it's definitely got a pattern to it. I don't know if you can hear it, but you know how fabric is woven. So yeah, there's a texture under there for sure. For sure. I think I'm going to hit my little B parts here. Just. Oops. Thankfully, I'm foiling there. <laughs> <laughs> My little bee parts. I know, huh? <laughs> Katie, you're you're getting bombarded, sister. <laughs> I hope you're still on. Let's see. Jen is asking. Um, her pasta quit work. Her pasta, your pasta. Anybody having pasta? <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Katie's got you, Jen. Um, yeah. Hold on. It's by this brand, Create It Fat Quarter Fabric. It's um. Can you see the tweet? It's like a woven, crafty fabric. <laughs> it's It goes with this particular group too can't remember what this one's called it doesn't have a name I don't think campers blush <laughs> pizza anyways this came in a nice big they call them fat quarters I'll open this one and show you let me move this out of the way so I don't get black as over. This is so darling. Oh my gosh, I love this. I need to do a hippie, maybe a peace sign on top of this. Oh, I'm feeling another rock coming on, huh? <laughs> Anyways, so you can see. Let me show you how big this is. I gotta lift my camera way up there. <laughs> so it's still upside down. But see, it's really big, you know. They call it a fat quarter, but I will measure it in that way we have, we know what this is. So we've got, looks like 22 inches by 18 22 by 18 so that's how big you get pretty nice large size of uh, foil or <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> for dollar 49.99 you get <laughs> boy that'd be a deal <laughs> we'd all be lined up wouldn't we <laughs> Okay, so this is dry here. This um, so the Arteza dries pretty quickly. It does uh, dry kind of glossy. So, I think that'll be okay though for for tonight. 
the wings are dry too. So I'm going to put on my gloves and we're going to get busy with some foil. Because I love doing this bee. This bee makes me happy. <laughs> so I want to do the wings first. I didn't see. Oh gosh. I didn't see. Did we decide on the wings? Are we doing the honeycomb or lace? Hi, Edie. Oh, thank you. I'm loving you, loving this. I kind of like the lace, but the honeycomb, you know, is honeycomb. <laughs> lace. Okay, I got two laces. Give me a tiebreaker. Okay, three lace. We got the lace. Lace, lace. That is this one, right? <laughs> Black lace, right? <laughs> I know. Hollow bait. Okay, one of hollows. And... Okay. Oh, over natural. Ooh, good idea. If I can find it. <laughs> See? I think I have just enough left to accommodate your request, but I got to let it dry. So if I put it on, it takes a while for it to dry. So then we'll work on the body. That's awesome. Good idea. Hmm. This is what I used to apply the decoupage when I decoupaged the fabric to the rock Delia. So it's matte gel by Liquitex. It comes in a bigger jar. This is a sample. Okay. So I found my little sample of naturalist glitter. I think that's what we're talking about, right? You wanted the glitter? Oh, the hollow. Yeah, this one. It looks so different on camera. <laughs> I can see all these pretty sparkles. Can you guys see them? Okay, here we go. You know, this paint, it never really looks great on video, but it is amazing in person. And those of you who have it know that it is just awesome. I know <laughs> that paint. <laughs> I keep meaning to buy some of this, but then I forget. <laughs> Silly me. But it lasts forever. Oh my gosh, I've had this for a couple months now.
<laughs> oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So, Julie, you got kind of the best of both. You got a little holograph with the glitter. And we're going to do the lace on top. So it's kind of a compromise midway. Yeah. <laughs> that way we get more mixed media in here anyways. Because this is more like a glue paint. Thank you. i got to turn on the fan. It's a little smelly. So sorry if it's loud. Oh, I forgot I brought these out too. <laughs> The fun ones. But I know they're crazy beautiful. But I don't think they go with our B. I'm gonna stick with what we picked out or what I picked out. So this gold go there. And now that the black's on there, I can show you what the laser does. It makes it look I call it laser. I don't even know what it's called. But it makes it look velvet, I think. Does it make the black look velvety? So I'm going to start down here. Nail art foil glue. I'm using beetles. Yes, Julie, that's um different. The mat uh Julie's asking for the matte gel. It's different than the matte medium. Yes, let me show you. So this is matte medium. Let me show you the difference. See, it's like a glue-like texture. It looks sort of like Elmer's glue. Maybe a little thinner. Okay. Then, this is the Liquitex matte gel, which is thick like lard. Crisco. That's the difference. So this is wonderful to use on fabric and thicker paper. If you're going to do the thin paper like Katie and I used for the tutorial, the very thin tissue, you definitely want to go with this for sure, the liquid. I'm going to start on the black bee bits. <laughs> my little bee bits. Just in my wee bee bits. I'm going to do this one section. I've never tried to foil over fabric decoupage. We're going to see how this goes. It might be where I need to do a base coat. So we'll see here. You want to be careful doing that because it is fabric. No fires, okay? And I'm going to cure it with my little light. It's bubbling a bit, but I think that's because there's air and fabric. Can you see the little bubbles in it? That's going to be a problem on the metallic, so I'm going to do a base coat on the metallic part, absolutely, for sure. Let me see how this transfers. transfers nicely and looks really good so maybe maybe no uh, base coat necessary look at that gorgeous gorgeous little bee butts 
Who doesn't like little bee butts? The foil, that comes in my favorite foil kit, um, Julie. I think I have it listed. I forgot to put it beforehand, but it is. I'm going to show you this because you can look it up by this, but I'll supply the link too if you guys can wait until the end of the show. And um, that way you can help me because every time you click on my link, I get a little commission. So this is by Del. I don't know how to say that, but it's Nail Art Foil Starry Sky Leopard Flower Snake Skin. <laughs> Seriously. Oops, sorry. Come on. Come on. There you go. But if you look that up on Amazon, you can find it. I used it on my last bee in the bee before in the bee before. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. <laughs> Oh, good to know, Dahlia. Del <laughs> Sorry. Dahlia, I want to call you Dahlia, and I know we discussed this. It just keeps coming out that way. I'm sorry. It's like I tell you, Dahlia, right? <laughs> sorry. I missed a little spot there. Don't be butts. So, strange weather here today. It has thundered and lightning and tried to rain but didn't rain. It was so hot and humid and nothing so the barometric pressure is killing me I wish it would rain Uh, Teresa, are you talking about this guy? If this is what you're talking about, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. This, I can't find it anywhere. I got it in a gas station, or actually it was like a smoke shop, uh, over ten years ago. And, uh, it, they say it's like creme brulee burner. So, kitchen, uh, creme brulee lighters work really great. And I'm in the market for a new one, so I'll probably be replacing that one here. It never runs out of butane, so when it runs out, you know, five years from now, maybe. It's been an awesome torch, and I really don't even need to replace it, so, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But it's an old school. Definitely old school. I'm surprised that is even still on there. <laughs> and still has a barcode. Wow. But I just use it for crafts, though. So. 
Are you talking about this foil? This one I just used here or the um, the other foil in the box? Yes, it is a cigar torch. Yes, that's what that is. It's a cigar torch. It's just a big, big one. Ah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Aw. The prettiest bee ever. That's so sweet. I hope so. Wow, that's fast dry. It's already dry. What a lucky night. The texture is quite cool though, huh? I didn't know if I was going to like painting on fabric, but it's been pretty cool so far. I could see how brush and paint might be a little tricky because of the texture. Also, since we're working on layers, you're going to want to cut off the foil parts that you've used. Because if you get those stuck in your glue, it'll take your paint and your fabric right off of your rock. And that, that's not any fun. I do love my foils. They're very easy release, so you don't have to do a lot of fussing with them. They just come right off. And there are pits and textures, but they're not noticeable. So once we put on that top coat, they'll disappear. This is when I sell, I think, did I not? I think you have this set. Delia, yeah, possibly. It's the transparent. It's all the clear ones like this. I think there's 11. 11 in the set, 9 transparent, and I believe I sent it with two. The first time out, it came with two metallics. This time, it's all 11 are transparent. I think I have, uh, ooh, I want to say four or five sets left in my Etsy of these transparents. I'm also breaking, see how I separated here at the, what is that called? The, oh, that one really bubbled a lot. I'm not liking that. Hmm. Thorax. <laughs> thank you. The monarch mommy, thank you. So on these in-between spaces, I'm going to use a base coat uh, first, so hopefully we don't have a lot of that bubbling, because that will show up on the full metallic like, like a bad suit. <laughs> Aww. 
Aw, Teresa. But the snake skin in it is pretty. It looks good on mermaids too, so. Oh, didn't it get well? I don't know what. What happened? I missed it. You have COVID, oh my goodness, dear, I'm so sorry. Definitely get get better, stay hydrated and you know, do all the things the doctor says. And we're all sending you happy healing energy. Right, everyone? <laughs> My peoples are good peoples. So I'm going to go in here again and just try to press in those places where there's little pitting. Krista, how do you get the foils to stick, stick except in rare instances? Um, it's the type of glue in the light. Are you, I think we've talked about this, but you ha have, um, you have the six watt, right? The six watt Mac art white legs, little light. And do you have one of these little flashlights, UV flashlight? You'll see when I go to the metallic that this is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> so you'll watch me struggle here with it. And sometimes it's not preventable. Sometimes you can work through it. I'll show you guys a couple of tricks to uh, get around it. And if you foil something and you're not happy with it and it's still pitted and icky, pop some glue back on there, some foil glue, and foil over it again, because that'll give you a base, and um, it should be clear after that. Did you see all those bubbles come out? So if you're not torching, that's probably part of the problem. See all these bubbles in here? I don't know if you can see them, but you see all the bubbles in there? So I'm going to hit it with the torch and watch they're going to come out. See how they come right out now it's glossy. Now, because it's on fabric, sometimes even on rocks, you hit it with the light and you start to see the bubbles. See them? They come right back up. So sometimes it's just totally not preventable. Now, that's what this has been doing all down here. I'm going to put on another layer of glue before I put on the foil and show you. Hopefully, this will work. 
show you how the glue can act as a base or you can use a base coat nail you know a nail UV nail base you can even use a, a top coat as a base if you needed to what you're doing is putting a layer in between the thing that's causing the bubbles which would be air in your rock or in your fabric or your glue now there's a second issue that happens with the light when the light is too strong and it hits that glue it can cause wrinkling and that happens for several different reasons and it's not consistent I've seen it with too much glue will cause wrinkles but I use a lot of glue I'm heavy heavy handed it can happen when your rock is too cold and your light is too strong it will cause instant wrinkling and bubbles when your glue is too cold it will cause instant wrinkling and bubbles so if there's any way you could warm up your glue this is mainly a wintertime problem but if you can warm up your glue you know keep it in a pocket or somewhere warm use a warm cup of water keep it sealed tightly don't submerge it just you know the bottom of it just a bit in warm water um, any way you can warm up your rock and the glue and then you have less and then hold your light away from it a bit if you're having problems with uh, wrinkles and bubbles if you hold your light far far away let me show you how far I'm holding this up oh my gosh probably a good six inches okay I'm holding it far far away letting the top cure just a bit and then I'm gonna come in lower that way you get a nice smoother cure and then come in on it we're still having a little bit of bubbles here I don't know what in the heck <laughs> I'm thinking it's fabric but I don't know all right let's see how that worked maybe there'll be less bubbles now also when you're applying it can you see the bubbles under the foil that's also another problem why your foil wouldn't transfer well you can do a few things here um, you can use a q-tip which is probably my favorite go-to and smooth out edges and bubbles and it's not going to get the air bubbles out because they're trapped under there so you can see them trapped under there the foil's not going to transfer right there but I'll show you how to fix that you can also use a cosmetic brush that's like rounded all the way around you see that and you can burnish it in with that a silicone tip nail tool this is what they're made for And that's actually curved to go on a nail, but you can use it. Okay, so when you're pulling your foils off, this is probably the most important part of getting the little bits to go back in the holes. Go very, very slow. Pull up and you'll see all of those little pieces. I don't know if you can see them on the clear part. Eh, probably not. But you could see them here where they didn't go down. See all those? And then you relay it back down. And then burnish it again or use your Q-tip. This is especially important when you're working with patterns that it will show. Okay, so that's great except for this one little spot and since we're not working with a pattern I just added it back in there and now we got a full coverage 
and see how this one's all bumpy and lumpy and this one is a little bit but not too much that's because I used two coats of glue so I gave it a base to work with Oh no, I'm so sorry. That's a bummer. I was really hoping they, you know, we had a first wave of the five below lights work wonderful. And then now they're, I think these people keep changing manufacturers because even like MacArt, their pink legs on their six watt light is too, too strong. And their, their white leg six watt was perfect. And lately it's been too strong. Some of them, not all of them, but so right now I'm saying this, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This one here, it doesn't have to be this, this light, but if it has 12 LEDs in here, I think we're safe. I'm going to say, I think we're safe. It needs to have 12 to cure. Six doesn't do the job, and more than 12, I don't know. It might bubble it, wrinkle it. 12 is safe, uh, and it doesn't overcure it. And it cures faster, actually, and more efficiently. The problem is, is it's kind of a, you know, you got to hold it. <laughs> so if you're doing a big project, it gets cumbersome. But, okay, I'm going to use base coat on this part to see the difference. And by Beatles, it's called Foundation Base Gel. Pardon me. And you want to use a separate brush, uh, liner brush, for your base gel. And you don't want that mixing with your glue. Oh, I'll bet that would help Katie the resin over before foil. I always forget about stuff like that. <laughs> I do have such a hard time working on um, glossy surfaces, so I always forget about, you know, doing resin first. But, I mean, that's an absolute great idea. So you still want to torch your base. Cure your base the same way. Ooh, no bubbles. Ha <laughs> Base coat it is, you guys. Okay. So, Beetle sells a... Wait. I spoke too soon. It's not too bad, though. Okay. They sell this foundation and top coat in a set. I think it's like less than $10. Maybe even less than 8 Something is... Like six ninety nine. I don't know if that's just the top coat or. I think it will have like a film on it. I'm pretty sure you just leave that on there. Yeah. Okay, then we'll do the nail foil glue.
Okay, let's see how this one works. You also want to give it a few seconds to self-level. Okay. I switched up the head because I wanted to show the difference between base coat and no base coat on the black so we could see it really, really well. Because when I do it down here, you're not going to be able to see it. But see how glossy and perfect that is right there? <laughs> This is going to be a good transfer. So base coat looks like it's a good choice when working with fabric. Get these off. And then lift up slowly and put it back down so the bubbles make sure you get that transfer inside the spaces where it didn't stick the first time. Smooth. <laughs> nice. I definitely like that the best. See, these are bumpy and ridgy, kind of, like got pitting. And this one is smoother. That was two coats of glue. And this one was base coat and glue. So <laughs> they are made to go together. I wonder, hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, <laughs> if it's not broken, don't fix it. Hmm? That's me. I'm always trying to take shortcuts. So if you're having troubles with your glue and bubbles and whatnot, definitely use your base coat. Most of us have it because we've bought the kits either by MacArt or SXC. And they come with a base coat, a top coat, a mat, and a glue. A couple of glues usually for the foils. Okay, so in here I'm going to be doing... Uh, the gold <clears throat> and for that I'm definitely going to be using the base coat first I'm going to go right on top of the fabric with this one it's more of an experiment than anything I want to see without the paint on there what if any difference it makes. I don't recommend applying it this way either, but I'm I want to see I want to see what it's going to do. <laughs> Use your little brushes. Which I will be doing that too, but. <laughs> okay, this one is the one for base coat.
Okay, base coat on. Yeah, um, good point. I am planning on resining uh, the whole rock when I'm done. So that will cover a lot of it. Sometimes it doesn't cover up the pitting and foil though. But it should cover up most of the scratches and squigglies and stuff like that. I've kind of gotten to where I like this light a whole lot. <laughs> it's easier, I guess. Unless I'm doing a big, big rock, then I use them all. I get out all the lights. <laughs> oh, these they sell these in packs too. Sometimes you can get two or four, and but not much. Like you can get two of these for seven bucks. Just make sure it's 12 LED. Right here. It has to be UV. 12 LED UV. Means it's purple. And then foil glue. And with the foil glue and metallics, you're going to want to be precise. Because everywhere you put glue, and then probably some other places, metallic will stick to. It will stick to paint that is glossy, like, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> uh, Multi-surface paint, high gloss paint, you know, because they stay tacky, sort of, even when they're dry. So it will stick to that foil Unfortunately, it doesn't transfer well. Otherwise, we would just use that for a transfer, right? But, um, yeah, it'll stick to a whole bunch of places you don't want it to. So just be precise where you want it to go. And if it does stick somewhere you don't want it, you can remove it with alcohol. The glue won't remove with alcohol, per se. But the foil should come right off. With that said, keep in mind that if you're using it, like if I were to get foil on this black paint right here and it stuck to it and I didn't want it there, I would have to be very careful because the alcohol will also bleed, make this paint bleed everywhere. So you got to watch out for that kind of stuff too if you're doing touch-ups. Generally, foiling is pretty basic. Things like this are more technical and detailed when you're doing different layers, different portions with different types of foil. And on different textures and surfaces. These foils were made to go actually I don't I don't think they were originally made for fingernails I think they were a mixed media uh, product first because I've been doing some research and I've been seeing foil for uh, like restoration furniture um, what's that called decorating and stuff like making faux finishes and foiling desks and doors and walls and all of that they make it in big sheets and it's very much like this but they use a glue that you paint on and it has to dry for like 30 minutes and then you apply the foil burnish it on and then you peel it off and the foil never transfers a hundred percent 
it, but that's the way they wanted it. You know, they just like that sort of rustic, distressed look. That's the look that it was created for. But on fingernails, with the right type of glue, you can get that full-on 100% transfer of foil, and it's gorgeous. So I think somebody was thinking. <laughs> Some nail tech saw it on her wall and was like, I want that on my nails. <laughs> and why not? We should be able to have that on our nails. Right, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know if we have a gentleman on here. Sometimes we have a mat. Gold leaf or leafing foil has been around a long time, yes. Mm, yeah. Definitely, that, that has been around for a long, long time. That is a lot different than these types of foils. I'm sure you know. <laughs> Gold leaf foil is so beautiful, but it is so delicate and hard to work with. Oh, thanks. Blueberry cheesecake. I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> also when you're working with the metallic you want the foil glue to be nice and ready here goes nothing guys wish me luck And I'm probably going to have transfer all over the place. <laughs> okay, not too bad. Just want to make sure and get all of the edges that I can. Okay, on the metallics, you can use a stylus, which is a small ball dotting tool. Like so, these dotting tools like this. You can take your stylus right around these edges and burnish them in there too. Do it gently. And don't get in a hurry with the metallics. And you'll see when I pull these off, they're going to be rugged and kind of awful looking. But your touch-ups is where it makes a big difference. Okay. Okay. So when you're pulling off, you want to make sure that you're getting a good transfer. So if you see pieces left on the majority, you want to lay it back down, press those back in, then pull back up until you get the transfer you're happy with. And if you notice that it's sticky, like you can see the glue sort of stringing a little bit, grab your light and run it over the top. Okay, so see here you can see where it transferred to places I didn't want it in there, like here. Okay, you can do on the places that are on top of other foils, you can gently buff it off with, this is a paintbrush that I've cut down really close, so it's kind of giving it a rough edge. Like so, to get the majority of it off. And then... You can use your paint or your paint pen or your brush and liner 
and touch up the others. This is where you bring it back to. If you have to make your line bigger, make it bigger. You know, if you have to do a thicker, bolder line, do that. See how nice and crisp that looks right there now? Okay, and then Reline your sections. I think you're right, Delia. It's harder, definitely, <laughs> I think, to do a nail with foil than it is to do on a rock. Though, human beings being 98.6 degrees um, makes the transfer chances a lot more successful. But if you can warm up your situation, your rock and your glue, I think... Uh, better odds. Oops. I didn't want to do that, but I'm looking through the camera, so I completely <laughs> messed that up. I should put it down. You can hear crickets. <laughs> Are they your crickets or my crickets? We have cicadas going crazy here. They are in the mood for making love. And they are hollering out to their ladies. <laughs> ladies. All right, and then I'm going to put the glue on the wings and do the black lace. Mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live, oh no. <laughs> Oh boy, Allison, yay. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do base coat here too. Or, I'm just gonna do base coat and be safe. <laughs> Why not, right?
Thanks, Yvonne. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see if that warms it up a bit. It looks like it's kind of. See that streaky in there? It's a little bit. I'm going to put on some more. Maybe add a little. Make sure I got a cushion. Yeah, I think it is the glitter pink because it's got like a water base to it. So I think it's kind of gooing up under the base coat. But I think it's okay now. See, we're curing quite nicely. Lori, thank you for the hearts. I do love those. See the flowers in there? So pretty. All right, foil glue. Next up. And I ain't gonna lie, it's kind of hard to see where this glue is going because it's basically glossy on glossy. So you just gotta work it and make sure that you've touched everywhere you want the glue to be. Definitely torch. Then add a bit more. <laughs> Work it, girl. Are we talking about me? Work it, girl. <laughs> My cricket. <laughs> Katie did. Yes. Oh, Katie did. Yeah, they're loud, the cicadas. <laughs> I love cicadas though. I think I'm going to be doing a cicada here pretty soon. They are incredible insects. I'm enamored with bugs. If you haven't noticed, I like to do bugs. <laughs> I was looking in my files. I think I've done more bugs than anything. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a cool spider for Halloween. What do you guys think? 
spiders, snakes, oh my. <laughs> but it's going to be a pretty spider, you know, because blingy, blingy, foil and blingy. <laughs> I was actually contemplating doing that. <laughs> Depending on how long y'all want to hang out. <laughs> I was actually seriously contemplating doing 3D wings. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? All right, here comes the lace. Good night, Teresa. Oh, thank you for hanging out. Foil on, make sure there's no wrinkles. The lace. Definitely did not cure it down here, right? <laughs> and because it's clear, again, you can cure right through the top of it. Nice little hack. Thanks, Lonnie. A spooter. I love it. Yes. Oh, spider eyes we can foil. Oh, my gosh. Or or make them encrusted with the... I'm, I love that word lately. Encrust it. <laughs> with some rhinestones. Guys, this is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Whoever said to do the lace, kiss your brain right now. Kiss your brain. That was some vision. Look at that. Hmm. <laughs> So beautiful. How can you not just love that? And touch it up. See, we had a foil glue spillage over here. So pretty. Yes, it is definitely worth worth the effort to use both of the products because look at that transfer I mean ta -da! yeah it's like uh, the bells are chiming And it did take um, quite a bit of the base to not get a nice cushion. So I'm putting on quite quite a bit here. I mean, not pouring like a soupy. Well, yeah, I guess it is kind of soupy. Quite a bit. <laughs> you want a nice, good, thick coverage to cover up the texture that's causing us the grief. So if you're working on a bumpy rock, it'll help fill in the bumps. And 
the way the foundation works with the glues and top coats and polishes is it has a bonding agent that they they are made to stick together even if it doesn't feel sticky they're still made to bond together when the UV light hits it and heats it they kind of mesh in together that's what base coats all about Thanks, Sonia. hate to say it, but I think my little flashlight needs some batteries. Assistant. I don't have one of those. <laughs> Might have to switch lights in a little bit. Okay, top coat. I mean, nail art foil glue. Oh my gosh, if I've been saying top coat, please shoot me now. I mean, don't shoot me. Just forgive me how about that Yay! Allison has her eggs, her pictures of her eggs up, so definitely go check those out. Yay! So I'm assuming, Allison, that means they're on Creative Rock Art and Foil Techniques on Facebook. So run over there and check out Allison Wells' photos. The lease is average. Let's do something different. What are we talking about? Are you trying to say lace? It's a little late for that. <laughs> Goodness. Julie, you're kissing? Mm, what? What are you kissing? You're welcome, Allison. Or, you're probably talking to Jen. <laughs> well, you're still welcome.
<laughs> Allison, I can't look, but oh my gosh, I, it looks like your eggs are a hit. Oh, so pretty. Yep. I'm digging it. You guys like that? With the lace? Hmm, I think I ruined another pen. Do you guys go through Poscas? I am constantly getting nail foil glue on the tip and that just wrecks them. So if you guys are doing foils, definitely know that you're going to ruin a Posca or two. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. So I'm still, I'm still totally loving this. What am I going to do here? Maybe the head? Add a little fun. Oh, that would be pretty, huh? Make a pretty bee head or a bee body. What do you guys think about putting it in there? I'm thinking I like that. Yes. So I'm not using the base on this because now there's already two, there's a base and a glue and a foil. So I'm doing double foil on top of double base and glue. <laughs> I can hear the geckos on my window. We get nighttime geckos. They're little bitty clear. I call them clear. They're, you can see through their bodies. <laughs> They're nocturnal and they live in your walls and stuff at night or during the day. They don't come out. As soon as the lights come on, they come around the lights. Anywhere there's light, they come around and eat bugs. And they are the cutest little things. They have so much personality too. And they're little. They're no bigger than my finger. But I love their little feet. I love gecko feet. And they just suction to everything. <laughs> Walk up the wall. Night, Julie. Thanks for hanging out. Ooh, yeah, school. Our start's Tuesday. Thank you so much for your help tonight.
Hi, Kathy. Hello. All right, here goes. Kiss your brain. <laughs> I did. Kiss your beautiful brain. And I cannot claim that's my thing. <laughs> it's uh, my son's fourth grade teacher, I believe, said that all the time. And it stuck. She would tell the students when they were extra smart, you know, about an answer or something. Kiss your brain. Not, but that didn't sound right. Not just the smart kids, but when you answer something really well, <laughs> she would make sure that you knew that she was proud of you. Totally digging that. Yep. So now what should we do mixed media wise to tie this all together with the fabric background? Oh, wouldn't that be pretty? Pop that off now that I already did that. Oh, goodness, gorgeous. Look, I put uh, the watch. Just watch, you'll see. Oh, look at that. It's changing color. Pretty cool, huh? Anyways. I forgot about that bee. Do a bee and a bee. No. <laughs> what could we do here? Make a queen bee. I have a crown. Get rid of that bit. Some 
Look at these fun things. These are Revon transfers. I wonder. <laughs> I don't even know if that would work, huh? Probably not. But look how fun are these. A jeweled stick. Who said that? Kathy, good idea. Hmm. Look at me. All right, rhinestones coming out. <laughs> I like that jeweled stinger bit. I have somewhere here. Here they are. too big or weird for a stinger yeah let's see maybe haha <laughs> nice <coughs> excuse me sorry for the cough stinger jeweled stinger bit <laughs> So I have this fun bee crown, or not bee crown, but it's a, queen bee, oh I like that, can you guys see that? I have this cross. I think I'm going to move into here. Nice. <laughs> All right. So. I have these little things that I can encrust <laughs> stuff with. So we could do like um, something. That was pretty. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. What else, guys? You guys think we should put um, stuff like, um, I don't know, pay come on, mixed media girl, Katie. <laughs> what should I do here? Some gold? Yes, we need to add some gold stuff, huh? Like, um, I think maybe some gold lining would be warranted here. It just doesn't seem very finished to me. Like, it needs something. The feelers. Yes. Let me get a detail brush. <laughs> do everything. I love it. Okay. This one might be too thin. Let's see. So I think I'm going to top line things.
I like that. Honeycomb, good idea. Wish I had a honeycomb stamp or stencil. Hmm. I need a longer brush. That one's too long. This is pretty cool B. Might be one of my favorite. Um, Jen, this is a combination of Treasure Gold 3081E and silver, I think it's called platinum. Uh, let me look. Anyways, I was trying to make Mayan gold. You know me, I like to make my own stuff. So I'll show you. It's these two combined. Platinum 3085 and 3081E Treasure Gold. Those two combined make Mayan gold. <laughs> Very close to it. I had a sample of it in here. So, like what's in this lid is Mayan gold. So, yeah, you can't even tell the difference. I'm stubborn. And I don't need a 500 gallon bottle of gold paint. I like that gold line. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks, Nisi. Oh, I wanted gold. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So I think I jumped down the gold lining rabbit hole here, yeah? 
I think I can go kind of fast though. Wanda Gold, you're so cute. Wanda Gold, Wanda Gold. This gold's a lot less yellow than the B Gold. I gotta tell you guys, these new brushes I'm using are amazing. Amazing. I think I found the uh, answer to not having to cut your brush. Okay, almost ready. I think I might line the inner portions too, just to tie in the two gold. Just around there. What's that called? She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Getting closer. One more big leg.
you know, the background wasn't all 80s animal print, I could go steampunk cog. A gilded bee. Yes, Jen. <laughs> Let's see what we got in this goodie box. And my husband brought me this earlier. It's um it's a mesh, but it's it's not plastic. You wouldn't use it with um, UV glue, you know, to make the skin. But it might work for putting some honeycomb on here. <laughs> but I'm scared to try. I don't want to ruin my bee. So let's do a little sample. A little test. I love it. My boy's always looking out now for for fun things to work with. Let's see. I'm going to try to stamp it and see what that comes out like. So, obviously, I think I'm going to use gold. It's probably the least likely to ruin it and look good. <laughs> Lori says, do it. You're such a daring one. Ooh, maybe. What do you guys think? Yes. Yes? What do you think? Sort of? Maybe, maybe not. Can you see it? Okay, guys. Hold your breath, okay? Everybody hold their breath. Because this is, this is not my thing. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, I managed to make a big mess. <laughs> oh, man, this is a... I'm having flashbacks to my girl the other night. Holy moly. Okay, let me try this again. Down here. Okay. Calm down. Simmer down, sister. Okay, just little bits, right? And that's not too bad, but oh, that's better. Okay, so you just gotta be calm. Cool. Can you guys see it? Dab, dab, dab. <laughs> just dab, dab, dab. Just, just dab. And very, very, very little, little bitty paint. Little, little, little bit of paint. Very little bit. But I will do the experimenting for you guys. That's me. That's what I'm doing. Oh. Dab, dab, dab. Well, you know, because it has um, the Liquitex on there, you can kind of almost just wipe it off, which is so cool right now because I kind of wanted to cry for a second. See? Wiped it off. I need some in here, huh? I'm missing paint. I'll go back over the black a bit. But that's good. Okay, stop, right? <laughs> What's this, Lori? Did you give up on me? Is it a mess now, guys? <laughs> not too bad. I mean, it's not the worst. 
Yeah. I think six of you just jumped off. <laughs> You're like, that's it. She's a, she ruined it. <laughs> uh, yes. Mixed media is not my thing. But I'm getting better. Right? And that's how we all grow. So now we got to glue some stuff on here. Right? So the glue and stuff is going to be in this box. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see what I got in here. Ooh, fun. I got little bitty cogs. I got big, big cogs. And I got really pretty gems. Oh, I think I like that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> Which way? Or do we not like it? Is it too much? Yeah, it messes with the camera. It's not you. <laughs> it doesn't. I... Is that any better? Do you know you can see my mess? <laughs> so, I got a vote on this. I think I got two votes on that. I got a Marvy Poo and an I Love It and a Beautiful. <laughs> I like the Marvy Poo. Easy. Oh, this girl. Mm. Okay. I also have all these fun things. Well, these are clock parts. Do we want to turn it into a cog? And I got some keys. So, do you guys want to see? Tell me, tell me. Just the gem and the rhinestones? Or shall I go the other direction? Yes, what, Bambi? <laughs> yeah, maybe just the gem, I think. Let's not do everything Lori says. <laughs> I love you, Lori. Oh. So, let's see. Um, tequila? <laughs> And the crown. The crown add. Okay. Jen says the second one. Yes, the second crown. I agree. That was very loud. I apologize. Sorry. Okay. So we're going with this big one, right? And this crown. Um, yeah. Because that's just too stinking cute not to put on there. And we gotta have the Jemmy Stinger. Right? And then should we put some crusties? Crusty. <laughs> Encrusted. <laughs> it might be late. Okay, let's start with. It. Well, no, I gotta do the resin. <laughs> So we can put them in there. Do you guys want me to do that? Or do you just want me to post a picture of it all together? Who wants to hang on for another 10? Crust to crust is a must. <laughs> sing it, baby, sing it. Encrusted veining on the wings. Nice. Love it. That's cute. I like it. Okay. Got it. So, we're going to work on a riser rock. Like that. 
Okay. Kind of talking to myself here just for a minute. Got to talk through the plan. Work it out. Work it out. I have the coolest Lazy Susan in the whole wide world. I know you guys have seen it recently, but I'm so proud of my husband for that. Look at this thing over here. Can you see this? Watch. But there's more. Each one of these spins too, sometimes. <laughs> okay, see? I had to give that a sec to dry. Okay, we're good. So I think it's all dry enough now to put on the resin coat. Fingers crossed, everybody. Kind of feel like I should spray it, but I don't know how that will. Okay, I'm going for it. Nope, I'm not. I forgot. That was close. You guys were just going to let me do that, weren't you? And Lonnie, are you out there going, sign it, sign it. We got to sign our work, guys, because how else? Because how else are they going to know when we're Picasso, right? <laughs> try, try, try. Call it good. Here we go. Mr. Resin, please, please. Oh, spray it. Lori says spray it. <laughs> okay, seriously, guys. Will you give me 30 seconds? She's right. She's seriously right. Okay, 30 seconds. Countdown now. 29, 28, 27. 3, 2, 1, slow down. There we go. <laughs> Sprayed. <sighs> now I can smell that for a minute. <laughs> but it dries so fast. Gotta love Rust-Oleum 2X matte, right? Got to. This is already dry. And here we go. Fingers crossed. So this is going to be a process here. I'm going to be doing the resin and then I'm going to use Bondic because I've got some of these gems are hollow on the back a bit. So I got to build up a base for them to adhere to. This is so therapeutic doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like um a cake, you know? Oh, Miss Katie, we just haven't played around with it. We'll get you a good signature. Mm 
<laughs> Better than tequila. Thank you. I don't know. Tequila's pretty fun. Yeah, Katie? <laughs> no. Katie's like, nope, nope. I've lost too many clothes. <laughs> Just kidding. I think I'm going to have to go in with my fingers, which I can't stand, but here goes. gloves but there first so I'm gonna pop some rhinestones in here while it's wet so those will set yeah, me too worry oh it's awful that's why I don't like touching it even with gloves on it just freaks me out so yep yeah, this happened let's see a week ago can you see these these marks here that's from touching it on my dick it was on my desk and I touched it and that will be scars forever you know what I'm not gonna be able to let this sit actually I'm gonna have to do a couple of coats of resin see how it's soaking into the material yeah put a little more here Anybody resin on material fabric before with UV? I have done it before, but this one seems a bit different this time, but it's not the same kind of fabric either. I'm going to just pop that in there while it looks good. Come to the light. Come into the light, my child. Okay. I know it's live, but it has to cure for a little bit. So, what do we want to talk about? I know. I'll start. I'll start project number two. It's another bee. Imagine that. But while we're waiting, got to do something, right? Isn't this going to be pretty? So, I will work on this one. This is definitely a different fabric, so we'll see how the paint does on this one. I might have to use ink or something. I don't know. No, it's okay. What do you think? Yeah, my pen does not like this fabric at all. Well, that's going to eat a pasta. I'm going to have to line it with a brush. I'm totally fine with that. How are we doing in here? Okay. Who's still with me? I still have people. Oh, that's not black. See, I almost put that on there. <laughs> Actually, I think that would be pretty, huh? Let me see what we can come up with here. I forgot about this ink. You know, I put some bearings in there. And they are... Put some more in there. Let's see.
bearings so you can shake up your stuff. Thank you, Lori, again. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that's That looks good. Look, guys. That looks pretty good for being on fabric. Now, it's nowhere near cured enough, but it's enough to work on. So that's good. Bondic. Here we go. So. I think I might be... Hopefully I don't run out here. I don't know where my refill is, but I do have one somewhere. So I'm going to hit this with light so I can start building up a base for this. <gasps> Hi Lonnie, thank you. Thank you for hanging out guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I did, Lori, I put them in there. I put the BBs in there. I got two, four in there now. I had some in there, but they were stuck in the stuff <laughs> okay another layer maybe this should be good and some in here Stick it on there. This is amazing stuff. And thank you, Bonnie. So I'm just shooting a little of this. It's got like a little needle applicator. It's so cool. And then I'm just shooting it in there. And then it cures in seconds. Oh yeah, that's not going nowhere. Birdie, yes, thank you. I'm so excited about this bee. This is very, very cool. <laughs> All right, let's do a, got to do a little bit here, build up. Get on there. She can't have her crown crooked, right? <laughs> her tiara. Come on, get on there straight. That's straight. I hope it's not crooked. <laughs> Queen bee on the tequila. <laughs> yep. We got a stinger.
cred. Oh, you guys, you can't even see what I'm doing. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Sorry. There. Now you see. Stinger. Stinger. Now we got to do some encrusting. So for that, guys, what do you think? Let's see. We Somebody said to do some, like, veining. So to do that, is that like, um... Got to plan that. Let me see what these look like on. Oh, I better turn the light off. Oof. Oh my gosh, wait, that just disappeared. You can do as well as me for real. You could do, you could do better. Okay, I'm not adhering them, but I'm going to scoot them around to see. Oh, you can't even see them. How funny. Yeah. I don't even think those are going to even show up. I could just like spread a few around, huh? Just. Yeah. Those are just not going to show up. So I'm just going to gently scoop those back off. But I could do regular rhinestones. Just a few in there, like um, drop them in the swirlies. See in the swirly bits. See, I could put those in all those little swirly bits in there. Oh, I like that. Do you guys like that? I like that. Anybody like that? Do those, and then I could put different sizes in there. <laughs> Lori, you got to be on bottle number two. Dump them all in there, she says. Bless your heart. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny. Yeah, I like them in the swirly bits here. What do you think, Lonnie? You like them in the swirly bits? All right, a couple more over here, and I will set those, and then we're done, I think. Unless you guys say you want something else, then we'll do more. <laughs> it's okay. I dig you, so it's okay. I think it'd be total fun to finger paint with Lori. Oh, 
Okay, we'll call that, yeah. They're just kind of, no rhyme, no reason, just in there. <laughs> I know, right, Lori? Don't ever change, ever, never, never. We love you. Okay, you guys are going to have to tell me to put down the, the rhinestones. Walk away. Walk away from the rhinestones. Okay, I'm walking. I'm walking. This is me walking. Okay, Bondic. I'm going to use that to do these because I don't want to apply more resin, do I? Oh, maybe not. I love these wings. I don't know if you guys can see it, but they are they have so much depth to them because of the layers. So we have a layer. First we have the the gray black wash layer, right? And then we have the naturalist paint layer. And then we have a base coat and a glue and a foil and resin <laughs> it is glorious let me show you i don't know if you guys can see how deep those wings are but there's so much depth in them you just there's no ship oh i think i have a flash oh look you could see <laughs> bubbling <laughs> bubbling can you see now? Can you hear me now? I know. It's the tools on YouTube live are not obvious. You gotta hunt them down. And it's one of those things if you touch the screen. I panic, is it going to like end the lock? Is it going to take me to a different screen? Am I ever going to find my way back? You know, those kinds of panicky thoughts go through my head. So, I'd rather just suffer. <laughs> you know, all left turn, or all right turns. I, I'll go right six times to not have to go left. Yeah, that's me. You don't want to be behind me driving. <laughs> I'm the safe bet. <laughs> oh, don't panic. Never. I love you. That's Lori logic. Don't panic ever. You guys, I love this bee so much. Ta-da! We made a bee, you guys. Look at this bee. Can you believe it? I am so excited. Thank you so much for hanging on and hanging out. And I'm going to be doing this one too. And I will post it in the group when it's finished. I'm just making some bees. Today's National Bee Day. So let's make some honeybees. You know, it's an important thing. These honeybees, they, if they die, we die. So let's do what we can to maintain our honeybees. Their future is our future. And check out Deborah Hackman. She has some amazing live videos right now going on all the time. She releases monarch butterflies on the daily practically. So, And um, she posts in the group sometimes those videos. So if you want to, go to Creative Rock Art and Foil Techniques on Facebook. Look up Deborah Hackman and her videos are on there. She has some beautiful butterfly photographs and stuff that she's done with her um, 
monarchs and it's beautiful photography. So, anyways, thank y'all for hanging out and boom shakalaka Nisi, thank you. <laughs> That's a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, Lonnie, Lori, Aaron, all of you, Kathy, love it. Allison, have a good night. Boom. Bye-bye.